How's it going everyone? So this is gonna be an Intel based video. I have two major topics. The first one talking about the latency problems. And I did get kind of far with that issue. I originally talked about installing Linux and I had this drive take like over a month to show up to actually install Linux. So I'm still gonna do that, but I have actually made some progress on my own system, just running Windows and getting the stuttering to go away. This does not fix the file explorer not showing up or any of those other issues that Tech Yet City and some other people have talked about. This mostly has fixed my mouse or cursor stuttering and movement around the desktop, which for me is way more annoying than the file explorer. I can wait a few seconds to, you know, look at some MP3 files. The cursor stuttering was just a nightmare. The other topic is the new Intel vulnerability. So if you haven't already seen this, there is a new vulnerability called Intel Downfall, which is a severe flaw that apparently according to PC World, will be uh, affecting billions of CPUs and it leaks passwords. And there's a whole article here. So we're going to go over that a little bit at the end. But I do want to talk about first the troubleshooting methods and tricks that I have tried to get my system to work better. So I wanted to start fresh on a new Windows installation. So the first thing I actually did was follow this little guide on how to install Windows 11 with no bloatware. I will leave this link down below. Um, it's a simple little trick of instead of selecting your region, you just select world before installing it and you will run into this little error but once you skip past it it's basically a bloat free version of windows 11 so not only am i doing that but i have no asus armory crate and i was running on a brand new fresh install to eliminate any potential issues the other three things which i had already known previous but i wanted to bring it up again because multiple people had commented about it um, was the power plan. So you have the balanced in the old control panel, best performance in the newer control panel. And then if you have an NVIDIA GPU or AMD, you just put the uh, prefer maximum performance for power management. I also disabled G-Sync and will only turn it on during gaming. The other thing that helped quite a bit was turning off the animation effects. I left transparency on, uh, but this was something I noticed causing some issues. Another thing I have tried in the past was just simply disabling the iGPU, which as you can see here, it doesn't show up because it's not on right now. Um, but you would do something similar to this where you would go down and disable device. But for some reason that really wasn't working well for me. And so I actually went into the BIOS and changed a certain setting, which I'll show you in a moment that actually massively fixed quite a few problems, which leads me to believe that a lot of the stuttering issues that people are having are definitely coming from probably multi-monitor users having the iGPU switch on and off. The next thing that I did that seemed to help quite a bit was going into the advanced mode on the BIOS. This will obviously look different depending on what board you have, but in ASUS specifically, go to the system agent configuration, go to graphics configuration, and then this primary display was set to auto. You want to set that to PCIe, and then this will probably be enabled on most boards. So I left that on disabled, and then just F10 and save and reboot. So since doing this, the system has been quite a bit more snappy. Things like scrolling the timeline is decent. It's not too bad. Um, yeah, it's been pretty good. Here's a little preview of my next 2019 video. was a pretty good year for AMD. So yeah, I mean, this is as far as I've gotten with this. I don't have the most time in the world to troubleshoot these kind of issues which is what is probably the most annoying because people need their workhorse PCs to do the things that they should do. That's what you pay for. You shouldn't have to disable the iGPU when you shouldn't have to do all of this to get your system running correctly. Is some of it to blame on like the Asus N with this board? Probably so. Um, the other factor is that now I don't have QuickSync and that's a feature that I bought. Now, people did argue this uh, office test as a joke. It shouldn't be a test, but it is something that did go away since switching off the iGPU. And uh, the snappiness of the machine is pretty good. And if I go in and actually enable the uh, G-Sync, just to prove that it's not a G-Sync issue or a screen related issue, um, I will still have the same experience Give it a moment here. All right, we're back up. I will still have a smooth experience 
as you can tell. And so, yeah, it seems like there is some kind of problem with the iGPU on these these uh, new CPUs. And I can't tell if it's a Windows issue. The one thing that I cannot explain for the life of me is on my system, turning off the iGPU seem to have band-aided some of the problems. But on the other machines that I referred to in my last video, um, one of them specifically was a Lenovo with a 12900F and the other was a 12600KF. And both of those machines still have the exact same stuttering I was complaining about in the first video. And as you know, the F skew means that there is no GPU on board of the processor. Since doing all these little tricks, latency mod seems to be going pretty good. We're currently running at two minutes and 28 seconds. Before this would actually fail around the two minute mark and you would just see red all the way up on the Nvidia driver. And uh, yeah, so, so far things seem to be a little bit more stable. I'm not sure if that's entirely related to the iGPU, but um, yeah, we're making some progress here. So lastly, if you are using an Asus board, which a ton of people are, uh, many people said don't download Armory Crate, it's garbage, and I've always been of that opinion. I have always disabled it in the BIOS when I first get a new board, and uh, it's just something I've just done. But for anyone wondering if they're not going to run like open source RGB or Signal RGB, um, you can actually download the standalone version of Armory Crate, and it seems to work just fine. So that's something uh, I just wanted to mention because it is annoying. I don't want Rainbow on my computer all the time. And uh, yeah, so there is that, and I will leave that linked down below. So that's about as far as I have gotten with this whole thing. Um, I do work a 9 to 5 job, and this is more of a side job. So um, I just had to mention that because time is super limited. I did install Linux on a smaller 256 gig drive just to test it. And I did have some issues installing DaVinci and some people had mentioned that about Linux, but um, I'm still going to try it on this two terabyte uh, Samsung Pro. And so that's gonna be coming in the future. Hopefully I don't run into too many crazy issues, but um, I will say that I still believe that there is something wrong with 12th, 13th, possibly 14th gen. I can't figure it out. Um, it's not that all these problems and fixes I just showed you have really reduced the stuttering and issues I was having personally and multiple people who commented were having as well, but it has not solved the problem completely. This is basically what feels like a Band-Aid. I should not be disabling my iGPU. I should not be doing all of this on a fresh installation of Windows just to not have problems. Like out of the box, this kind of stuff should work. Uh, you know, I don't care what anyone says. If anyone gets a new computer and is running into this and has a bad experience, they're not gonna want to go back to Intel or whatever system. So I, let, let's say it's just Windows 11. Why would you want this kind of problem that you'd have to solve? Not everybody has this time and technical expertise to go through all of this. And uh, yeah, it's just something that uh, I feel like should be resolved. I want to touch on the eCore thing one last time, as it is something that people constantly bring up in the comments. Uh, disabling the eCores did absolutely nothing for me. The stutters still existed. At times, I actually felt like the stuttering was worse. And I'm not sure if that's just how Windows 11 is coded to use the eCores and maybe disabling them causes some kind of issue. Having them off was no better. So anyone who is saying that it's the eCores and just disable them, unfortunately, that did not work for me in my situation. Uh, as for GPUs, a lot of people are saying, you know, Nvidia is to blame for the latency problems. I have tested this ARC card and I've already tested this 5700 XT for one entire night, and I still had the same exact issues across the board. So I know it has to do with the motherboard and Intel chip with Windows 11, or the Intel chip in general, I don't know, but uh, it's something I had to mention. The three other customer systems that I experienced the same problem on also had a variety of mixed parts. Uh, one of them had an ARC A770, the other one had a AMD GPU, so I am pretty positive it has nothing to do with the GPU. One of the only last things I can think of with this whole processor situation is possibly Silicon Lottery. Maybe some of them are just worse performing by a lot. Maybe they have issues that other ones don't. We have seen it in the past on things like Ryzen. Um, I still have customers who have watched videos that I've made about this and TechYes's videos and are buying them. I have two right here, sealed 13900Ks 
that are going to eventually go to somebody. So it's not that I believe everyone is having the problem. I just believe some people are experiencing the issues, which is probably why the comment section of the older video is so controversial. Up next, I want to discuss Intel's downfall, the latest vulnerability. And we're going to read this article from PC World. So this is pretty crazy. I'm going to read this quote here. The vulnerability is caused by memory optimization features in Intel processors that unintentionally reveal internal hardware registers to software. This allows untrusted software to access data stored by other programs, which should not normally be accessible. They go on to say that there can be losses of performance up to 50% in certain circumstances. And uh, I guess there was a person who had experienced 39% loss in a ray tracing workload, which is a pretty big loss, all things considered. I do want to say that with the Spectre and Meltdown problems, if it's a single user playing games or something, I will typically disable those patches and it does help performance drastically. In a situation like this, I am not entirely sure if you should disable something like this it says that you know you can have a uh, password hacking up here which is a little bit scary to be honest um, so definitely keep your machines up to date and follow this story if you're on an older processor because there might be some pretty big updates as you can see here they are emphasizing on intel's downfall flaw is serious so keep your me drivers up to date keep your bioses up to date and continue to check on this ever-growing story so that's pretty much going to do it for this video, guys. I am really curious for those who are having latency issues on your Intel 12th, 13th gen processor. If any of these fixes work for you, I would love to hear down in the comments like what it is that you did. Um, there was tons and tons of comments on the old video and it got too out of control that I could only read so many of them. And uh, so, yeah, let's start this video as a new comment section for those who have issues and want to talk about it. I did mention a discord, which a few people had brought up. It was a very slim amount of people. Um, I was going to start a discord specifically talking about this issue and people could chat in there. And if that's something you're interested in, let me know and drop a like if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want. And I will see you guys next time.